Shalom, shalom, mishpoka. Welcome to another edition of Ray Bash's Ramblings. Coming right on the heels of the communion video. If you haven't seen that, please watch that and, and come back to this video. But uh, a lot of people, the next question, once they find out that I don't uh, participate com in communion or believe in communion, they're like, well, how do you feel about foot washing? Um, in a lot of Protestant uh, Christian denominations, after the communion, the men and women will be divided up. Will go into separate parts of the the uh, church or the sanctuary or, or, or the facility, wherever they're at, uh, and they will have a basin of water with a towel that they usually wrap around their waist or put on their shoulder, and uh, they will, um, you know, people will pair up into couples. And uh, you know they'll wash each other's feet. Men will wash men's feet. Women will wash women's feet. How do I feel about that? <clears throat> well, I don't feel that it is a commandment. Um, I think if you want to do it, that's perfectly fine. If you want to add this and and um, institute this and put this in your Passover observance, I think that's fine. I think that's uh, you know that's that's okay. I have no problem with it. You know, just as long as uh, you know the. Uh, uh, the women wash women's feet, men wash uh, men's feet, that it's held in separate uh, rooms, um, you know, for modesty's sake, uh, because I don't see anything wrong with it. I don't think that Yeshua is commanding us that, oh, whenever you have Passover or whenever you have communion, um, wash each other's feet. I think washing feet is, is a very, um, very humbling, uh, very intimate kind of experience with your fellow believer. I, you know, when I was in the Christian world, when I was being raised as a Christian, I participated in feet washing and it was such a humbling, humbling thing to wash my own father's feet and have him wash my feet. Uh, we became servants to each other and we we cried and, and, and we just felt the presence of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. And it was a very bonding, uh, very um, humbling, uh, very character building, uh, edifying um, practice and moment within our within our faith, within our belief, within our walk. And I see no problem with doing this in Messianic slash Nazari Judaism. As I said before, for modesty's sake, um, make sure that the women pair off and the men pair off, that they're separate, they're not in the same room for modesty's sake. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I have no problem with it. Um, a lot of people think it's gross. A lot of people, you know, um, have a problem with feet. Like my daughter, she can't stand feet. She doesn't even want anybody else's feet touching her. She doesn't even like touching her own feet if she doesn't have to. You know, so like I said, I don't believe or feel that Yeshua is making this a commandment, that this is something you have to do. But what this was built upon, this was built upon a custom of the Middle East, a custom of Yeshua's day and time. Uh, whenever a guest would come over, um, they would have servants that would wash uh, people's feet because people didn't have Nikes or Reeboks or, uh, you know, or Doc Martens or any kind of boot uh, or shoe. They had sandals. And so when they walked the streets, the, the, the dirt and the dust would get on their feet, get in between their toes, and sometimes if the sand was really harsh and gritty, it would, you know, it would chafe and, and, and damage and, and roughen up the skin and make the skin raw. And uh, as a hospitable custom uh, in that part of the world, when you came in, you removed your shoes, there were servants there to wash your feet, so you would feel refreshed, you would feel comfortable in the house. And uh, so Yeshua was building and playing off of this ritual upon this social custom, so to speak. So we wear socks, we wear shoes. We don't necessarily have a necessity for washing somebody else's feet when they come over to the house or hire a servant to do that. We have showers, we have baths, we wash our own feet. But uh, Yeshua was basically making a statement with this act. He was um, showing, even though that he is a Messiah, even though that he is a leader, even though that he is a rabbi and a rav, that it is not below him to do the things of a servant, to humble himself and wash somebody else's feet. This is a very lowly, um, very you know, low thing. Uh, and you hired servants, you hired slaves, you hired lesser, what, what other people considered lesser people to do this job. You didn't hire usually another Yehudi, uh, another Jew to do this. Um, this was the job of captives, of slaves, of servants, of indentured people. And so Yeshua is saying, look, 
um, I'm humbling myself. I, as a leader, am teaching that when you are in a leadership position, it is not below you to wash somebody else's feet. It is not below you to do the things of a servant. To be a truly good leader, you first have to be a servant. Before you can ever be a leader and a great teacher and all this, you have to first become a servant. You first have to become humble. You have to become low. Um, this is to keep you from getting a big head and to, you know, keeping you from pride. And it's to, to keep a perspective, you know, that every human being, uh, of course, besides Messiah, because he was Messiah, but, you know, every human being puts their pants on the same way every morning. Every human being is the same. Um, you know, we, we all have, you know, faults and everything, and, and we're not perfect. Uh, but we should be servants and we should be humble and it shouldn't be below us to help any to help people out in any way shape or form I recall a true story of a woman who was on a plane and this elderly man total stranger had an accident he had messed himself and of course none of the stewardess or none of the airline people or none of the passengers would have anything to do with him he was told to go into the bathroom and clean himself off he was embarrassed. He was degraded. And this woman, who was a believer, she treated him like her own father, like her own grandfather. She went in and said, Sir, may I please help you? And she wiped the accident uh, away from him and cleaned him off and was able to get, you know, to clean his clothes to the very best that she could with what she had. And the man was just so humbled and the man was just so grateful. And this, you know, to be honest with you, I don't even know if I could do that. But that there is an example of a true servant. It wasn't below her to clean feces off of another adult human being. It, she didn't get paid for it. It's not like she was a nurse or a caregiver. She did it because she wanted to. She did it because she thought, you know what, this is what Messiah would do. She did it because it was the right thing to do. And so this is the whole thing about uh, foot washing. I see no problem with it. It's it's a great uh, teacher of humility. It's a great teacher of, of servanthood. And um, when it's done in the right spirit and done in the right way, it really edifies your life. And, and it connects you more with Messiah. It connects you more with, with the times of Messiah and the way they did things back then. So if you want to add that to your Passover observance, uh, like I said, as long as the men and women are paired off and they're separate, uh, you know, women washing women's feet, men washing men's feet, uh, you know, I, that's totally fine. I think it's great. Um, and um, I haven't had the chance in my, you know, personal experience as Passover to be able to add that in. But if I ever have a whole bunch of guests, I might implement that, you know, if, if my guests feel comfortable in doing that. Because I think it's a great, I think it's a great, uh, um, uh, a great thing to do, a great uh, lesson, a great uh, teaching opportunity, a great, for lack of a better term, a great ritual, if you will. Um, so I just kind of want you to understand uh, foot washing from a Christian perspective, understand it from a uh, historical perspective, and understand it from a Messianic Natari perspective. And so I hopefully this was enlightening and you learned something, and uh, maybe some of you have never heard of foot, foot washing before. You know, this is your first, you know, expose of, of feet washing. But yes, it does take place, and it does happen in, in, a, in a lot of Protestant Christian circles, uh, particularly, you know, uh, um, you know, Baptist and some Pentecostal circles and and things of this nature but anyway run out of time here thanks again for watching we'll see you next time shalom and shavuotov bye bye